tomorrow. So welcome along to Point Blank Music School, where today we're joined by DJ and producer Milton Jackson uh, for the next instalment in our music production live masterclass series. Uh, Milton's here to give us a bit of an insight into uh, some of his work in the studio and also to give um, a bit of an insight into some of the production techniques he's used on, on some of his biggest tracks to date. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it and give it up for Milton Jackson. Okay, thanks guys. Um, it's not my real name, obviously. Real name is Barry, uh, slightly unfortunately, not quite as cool. But I thought I'd just sort of start with a track I did for Free Range called Ghosts of My Machines. Um, it was a really big seller, won a Beatport award back when Beatport was pretty cool. Um, and uh, I kind of was really obsessed by, by this guy called Les Baxter, who was about in the 60s. This is him here. Uh, that's his press shop. It's not quite the same as press shots these days where guys are in a tunnel in South London. Um, he's with his dog. So he did this track um, on Moog Rock. <laughs> Which is a kind of Chopin track from 18th century or something. But I kind of really liked it and it's in E minor, which is quite a good key for house music. And um, I wanted to use some of the sounds in this. It's sampling more in a hip hop style than a house style. A lot of house guys sample house things, but this is kind of, I thought it'd be cool to incorporate this into a track. Um, the Beastie Boys also sampled the same album. Um, so I'll just give you a, a listen to the track if you've maybe not heard it. tracks it's all about texture it's not really a lot of guys are obsessed by beats and bass and everything which is cool but I really like the texture of using samples and also soft synths and trying to kind of get a happy medium between the two okay, so. so that's the track I'll go into the logic session show you what I mean by just trying to basically uh, get a contrast between obviously soft synths and um, and samples at the same time. Um, so this was like the... That's from the original uh, Les Baxter track. It doesn't sound quite as good here because I use a lot of outboard stuff and everything. But the main kind of chord part is from um, Predator. Which is a really good soft synth. I just stopped. Uh, using the chords, uh, just messed about the chord. Um, it's got a nice sound, but to me, like a soft synth has a certain limitation to it. Um, and you've really got to back that up with some other textures. So, this is just like an old a road sample pitched to the same kind of key and it gives it a nice kind of it takes away a bit of the digital nature of it um, kind of gives it a kind of haunting feel break, um, I used part of the original sample, which is just here, 
which is the very start of the track. So it's really when I try and do these things, it's more about incorporating, you know, maybe samples that hip hop guys would use and on off vinyl you maybe wouldn't really associate with house music to try and give it a bit of a an edge above um, a lot of the soft synth sounds and a lot of house music sounds which are quite, kind of tried and tested um, so try to put these sounds in to kind of give it a bit of uh, variation. Um, so like here I use contact a lot. So this is just, again, off Les Baxter. And I don't know, like, you could maybe get that sound in massive or something, but it'd be really difficult to get that kind of grainy sort of quality to it. And that's what kind of, that's what I try and go for anyway. So you, you'll hear it kind of pitched up high. mix doesn't sound particularly great here because it's just coming out of this. Um, and then kind of towards the end, it's just a simple case of using just ES1. Get some good sounds out of ES1 actually. Um, just E minor, well, not really. So really I, I try and get the, the top of it all done first, all the textures, all the bass, all the sound, and worry about the beats afterwards, kind of because the beats, you just want the beats to sit underneath everything rather than I think a lot of house music, the beats take up too much space in the track. Because you start on the beats and the beats just take over everything and you're not really thinking about kind of some of the more melodic aspects of it. I think I just... Yeah. So here, just it's a simple case of chopping it up. Kind of gives you a nice fill. Here again, it's just a simple case of contact. Um, Get you that, those sounds. So there, you just choose that little section there. Gonna chop up. So just really that's kind of the basis of that track is trying to marry um, the kind of soft synth sounds with uh, your more esoteric, I suppose, samples that you might find like in hip hop tracks or something like that. Um, the drums are pretty basic. They're not particularly great. <laughs> just to really fit underneath the track. really pretty crap to be honest, but simple, but it's like if you start with the drums and you make the drums amazing and then they take over everything and there's no room really for everything underneath that, so they're just pretty crap drums, but they kind of work with underneath the track. Uh, 
They did this a while ago, so plugins wise, it's all really basic as well, just um, logic plugins. I don't, I use UAD plugins as well, and some of the Waves things like Empre um, Apex Exciter, which I'll move on to after this. So I mean, really that's basically this track done. So I'll show you the next track while well, this one's loading up. Another track I did for Free Range called DSI, which just came out about three months ago, well, two months ago. Um, I'll play this whilst I'm loading it up. iDrum a lot. Unfortunately, I couldn't get iDrum to uh, work on this computer for some reason. Um, so I've kind of had to bounce what iDrum does. It's just a simple step sequencer, uh, just like Redrum or something like that. Um, so this track again, it's just, you know, I've got stuff like ES1, which I put through um, Apex. Because it's like, it just sounds too soft synthy, and then you put, I don't know if you've seen this, CLA drums, which is again not really supposed to be used on this, I suppose, for drums, but if you bypass the two, it just sounds a bit soft synthy, and you put them both on, it just takes out a bit of the digital kind of ness of it. And then again, I'll just back that up with um, I'll use contact a lot. I'll, I'll load in. Oh no, this is the wrong one. Yeah, so it's just basically. Another kind of little sample to double up the, the main part, which you wouldn't really, it's kind of got a note to it, a kind of overtone to it. Again, I'll just, I'll just put hundreds of sounds in contacts, just various samples. And just kind of vibe off these and try and, you know, sit on the keyboard and try and get various parts together. So just little snippets and then try and make a loop out of that. Again, it's another kind of fill. 
I actually know her. Again, just messing about with samples and then trying to pitch it so it's all in key. Kind of main pad is just here. This is off a drum and bass record from like. 20 years ago, or well, no, 10 years ago, something like that. To get you that kind of underlying part. Um, so here I kind of I've rewired in Ableton. I use the high drum in Ableton, but I've just had to bounce everything that I've done. Um, again, it's just programming in high drum to get you your parts. Um, so I'll take kind of snippets of sound again in an eye drum and kind of program it together. Sample is just ain't no stopping us now, so it's kind of quite obvious. Some simple loops, but when you kind of join them all together, it's kind of again a nice hard sound of um, drum machines and stuff, and then kind of. Some of the sounds you get off loops from old records to kind of combine the two. Again, um, here I just use like a simple uh, side chain kind of hide the side chain up here. Um, it's like, and then I've got um, all the MPC uh, quantize parts so that you can quantize. I don't know if it comes up here, but they're in here. Um, you know, like the, the basic MPC, 60 to 75%. So that I can uh, MIDI quantize with the MPC settings to get the MPC swing. Um, so that's the eighths in there, and then the sixteenths. You can get these online; it's pretty easy. And then it's like that just gives you well fifty percent to seventy-five percent in here, and then it can get that groove from there, and then you can apply that to anything. Uh, in MIDI or in audio as well. If you want to like... Um, you can chop up audio and... Um, do Apple Zero, if it should work. And then you can... Uh, quant yeah, quantize selected events it's the MIDI is not the MPC stuff's not showing up in here, but then you can quantize uh, audio into the MPC grooves and things. It's pretty simple in Ableton, but as well in, in uh, Logic is quite good as well. Yeah, so here is just another more contact parts where I've got all these um, various samples in which I just bring in at the start of a session just to try and vibe off different sounds and see what I can come up with and then sometimes you just got to kind of pitch them about 
uh, just here, just to get it all in key. So here you've got a pad sound, which I've just put down to negative 13. I suppose it could be negative one as well, just to keep it all in key and everything is sounding nice. But up here it doesn't sound as good. Yeah, so it's, it's really kind of just a simple way of working. I mean, I, I don't know how logic environment works. I don't know. I'm just kind of trying to keep it simple. Um, try and keep the textures nice, all the sounds nice, a nice balance between soft synths and, and samples and, and like just try and keep it balanced between everything. Um, but, but really there's not, it's, it's not the most complex tracks in the world. I'm sure you've probably seen more impressive stuff, but it, it's got a nice feel to it and that's kind of what I'm aiming for, a nice rhythm, a nice sound, a nice texture. One. Uh, this is a track I've just done for Suba. Um, it's kind of on their vinyl only label. Um, I'll just give you a listen to it while I load it up. Again, similar thing. I, I love the um, the, uh, the CLA drums and Aphex Vintage Exciter, uh, Oral Exciter, also Impressor, which is a really heavy duty compressor, and just bust it, most of it into that kind of those three. Hats there, a nice sort of swing. Again, side chaining about three parts together, just to kind of groove it together. The bass, um, various snippets. I try and create loops out of tiny samples together. This is just a vocal sample which I've use the, the, the pitch thing, I've had to consolidate it, but you know we use the pitch thing in, uh, in here, transpose, to try and get it in the same key. Eye drum part. I've had to bounce it because I couldn't get eye drum to work on this. But um, kind of similar. There's I'll try and get 15 to 20 different individual sounds to create a full loop. Uh, 
snip, skippy snare as well there, just to kind of give a bit more swing. a nice sound for house music. You can kind of hear it there. Two in the drums, I just as long as they kind of underpin the whole thing and sound really good and are quite simple, then the rest should really take care of the track itself as long as you've got a nice swing to it. Stuff's good. Um, use the uh, where is it? Oh, I don't have it on this. It's kind of nice though, soul vibe and everything. I don't have all my kind of plugins on this laptop, unfortunately, but um. What I'll do is I'll, I bounce it through um, a summing amp, which has got like 16 outputs, 16 inputs, sorry, um, which I take from a sound card, a 16 outs into the um, 16 ins on the summing input, and then I record it back into the computer. It just kind of seems to separate the sound nicely. Um, it gets the sound out of the computer. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll edit it. I'll edit the wave in, the, in here and just choose little bits that I like and arrange it as a full wav rather than messing about with all this kind of stuff because I think it just makes it sound a bit tighter when you loop up certain sections. Here I've just looped up this section. Just it kind of makes it sound a bit tighter when you do it as an arrangement. Here the whole track sounds so hinges on basically one sound, which is that kind of. I mean, without that, the kind of it gives it a lot more energy coming out of the break again off eye drum. music is pretty simple, it's basic kind of parts. Um, so this is the kind of B-side to that, the similar to the, the Suba record. Um, I'll just put this in. Thank you. 
Again, similar sort of setup. It all hinges on um, a lot of this, this, these sort of bass sounds, which are kind of almost nondescript. They don't really have a key, but they kind of fill up that bass frequency. And. Um, these kind of claps which are kind of giving it the swing. Now up here you've got just an Oberheim part. I use the Oberheim uh, Matrix 1000 which is kind of a really cheap rack mounted soft synth that you can get and record a lot of that into the computer. Uh, here I've just pitched it down three, to three semitones. Which is kind of the basis of it. And then here I've kind of got a hiss sound, which is actually a sample from uh, the Beach Boys, believe it or not. Um, at the end of one of their recordings, it's just a kind of nice, gives it a bit of texture underneath it. Again, just kind of pitching vocals about here. I do all this in iDrum and have a little sample and I'll program it in iDrum so that it kind of happens exactly where I want it to. But really the kind of basis of it is um, coming from the are nondescript bass sounds in this bass echo, which is really in another sort of sound. Of I do it is just try and get as many samples as possible, kind of bunch them into the right key and just try and get a, a vibe out of it from there rather than a loop for a sample or something like that that carries the whole track. I'll try and create a track out of maybe 15 to 20 different uh, little snippets of samples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta bring that feeling out. 
Um, so another sort of thing I wanted to talk about was um, I did this remix for Planet E, um, which kind of came about. I did an edit on SoundCloud of Recluse. It's the Carl Craig remix of Recluse. Um, I just wanted to talk about how sometimes you, I did it. I put it online on my SoundCloud, um, just thinking it'd be cool to play out, and. Um, they, at Planet E, they got in contact with me, uh, like Carl Craig and stuff, and Monty Luke, who, who runs the label, and they, they wanted to put out this particular remix, which I just really did as an edit to play out. So it's, it's kind of less than how, you know, sometimes like you put something on SoundCloud, it can, can pay off sort of thing. Um, Basically, I, I kind of remixed a remix and put it on SoundCloud, and something kind of good came of it. So it's just one of these, you know. Sometimes you think if you do that, then the label will get in contact with you and tell you to take it down, basically. But uh, it was kind of one of those sort of good situations where um, they decided to put it out. So it was kind of good. But yeah. Does anyone have any like, questions or anything? Or oh, mate. Hi. Uh, how did you go about remixing the track? Did you get the stems for it, or did you just take the track? And I took. I took the. Um, I had the vinyl, and I just. Uh, I took little bits out of the vinyl, like breaks out of the vinyl, okay. and then just, so I suppose it would be like getting the stems, but when I sampled it off the vinyl, it kind of had a really nice, the vinyl was really old, so it kind of had a really, if you hear it on here, it had a really nice sound to it underneath it. Because it was so old, it was really covered in crackles and dust and crap and everything. Um, so I just took all the breaks, that were there and then just put my own beats underneath it and stuff. Um, and then what they did was they were going to send me the stems, but they kind of liked the way it was. It was more like an edit, like, you know, if you were to take a disco thing and edit it up into house music or whatever, it's kind of got a nice complete feel to it. Whereas yeah. if you take all the stems, it becomes a bit contrived, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, so that's basically how it happened. Yeah. It's was, it was really kind of a nice surprise, actually, when it all kind of came together. What samples did you use? The old track you had, 1998. That oh yeah, that was like unfortunately because I had that in in Reason, and I just I've lost all the the parts for that. Again, it's just I samples jazz records, like little chords and. Um, I think there's like four or five jazz records I sampled to do that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have, I was going to bring that today actually, but I don't, I couldn't, it was quite old, so I just lost all the parts and stuff. So yeah, I'll try and sample jazz records. Again, the Les Baxter guy, like 60s stuff, Exotica music, um, you know, sort of French library music, all these things I'll try and sample, and then just try and double up with more, um, Kind of modern sound like Massive or, or you know, Contact 5, or, you know, not Contact 5, but you know, like Predator or stuff like that, just to try and get the two together, just so that the texture kind of is nice. It's hard to explain, but. Um, 
th those were like loads of old jazz records, basically all kind of pitched about. I would just sit and pitch samples and then um, try and get everything in key and then and, and go from there, really. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Um, I noticed you were using uh, Ableton as a rewire. Um, yeah. And I was wondering, what, what do you primarily use Ableton for? Is it mostly doing like your percussion or something like that? Yeah, really, I was speaking about this earlier to the guys before it started. Um, I, I really love Ableton for putting down ideas and it's really quick. Uh, the sound of it sometimes doesn't really blow me away. I mean, if you look at it, when you're in Ableton, I've always wondered what this is, high Q. Why does it, why would you need to have, it should be, the highest highest quality available. I don't really buy this. Um, sometimes, you know, a lot of people kind of have a big um, thing about the Ableton sound. Um, it, it's good, but you know, I have to use Logic really to mix everything, and then from Logic, I try and get everything out of the computer, so that you've got I've got an API twenty five hundred and some compressors and things, which just gives it a nicer feel. I mean, when you're hearing it here compared to in here, so it's a bigger difference. So really, I'll, I'll try and put um, I'll put things in Ableton as a um, to get the idea down quick. Because sometimes you can get lost in Logic; it, it can be a bit annoying. It, I've just started using Logic Nine, but Logic Eight used to crash all the time and it used to kill the vibe sometimes. Um, but I'll, I'll use. Uh, Ableton to, to put down ideas, I'll, I'll, I'll load up like maybe 10 iDrums and then you know all these parts were originally iDrum and then and just try and chop things together in iDrum and you put in choke groups which then cuts everything off so it's like you know kick and hack cut, cut each other off. I don't like having a kick drum, a hi-hat, a, a snare, I'm not really into that I try and keep, I try and group things together and try and you know, if you use the MPC and you use um, one tr one hit will mute off another hit, you know, because you're using monophonic or whatever. I like that because it gives you a better groove. Your your each track bounces off each other. If you've just got like hi hat here, kick here, and each sound is completely independent of each other sound, it's just really like everything sounds really kind of separate. Whereas if You've got choke groups in iDrum. I wish I could so, uh, show you. It's really simple. It's just, it's just like a monophonic thing. So when one, when one, yeah, like kick triggered, will, it cuts off. Yeah, so you'll have yeah. a long hat, but it'll be cut off by the kick, and then you can set another sound like a little clip or something, or and it will cut the sound off as well. And th and that way you can create much better grooves because everything's cutting each other off, um, and it's not like here's the hi hat it's compressed and it's like here's the kick it's compressed and everything's just really all the, you hear it in the beat it's just like kind of like this um, so that's really kind of what I use iDrum in Ableton to do is just try and keep everything really groovy um, a similar a similar thing with um, you know with compressors uh, sidechain compression it's a, bit, it's, it's a bit kind of a dirty word because it's like trans music uses sidechain but you know on on this Oberheim sound, you uh, just a little bit of um, sidechain again uh, contributes to the groove. The last track I had about four tracks all side chained together. So really, it's it's about grouping things together and getting the groove really tight. Because if everything's bouncing off each other, that's when you get the best groove. If everything's like 300, you see these guys and they've got like 300 different tracks, and it's like each sound's got its own little bit and everything. I'm not really into that. Like I, I like to group everything together, put effects on a group, have all the beats bouncing off each other have everything kind of side, side chained against each other so that it's all kind of one um, one kind of living thing rather than uh, everything separate, you know, which I'm not, I'm not really, I don't really think that, you know, for this kind of music, I just don't think it really works. And again, it's like, you kind of worry about stuff like that, but then people in clubs aren't interested either, you know, they don't really care if you use, I mean, people say, oh, well, the Ableton sound and everything, but. I've played the Ableton tracks in clubs and no one, <laughs> it's not like they're coming up to DJ booth going, is this made in Ableton, you know, it's like, it's just kind of, nobody really cares, but it, we care, but you know, it's kind of, 
um, yeah. Well, we've got um, a couple of questions from the guys online. Yep. Um, first of all, uh, Nick asks, um, do you have any particular sort of reverb, favorite reverb plugin or? I've never really been able to find one that I really like. It's really hard. I mean, I think unless you're going to go out and buy, I use impulse responses and um, I, don't, I don't have them here. <laughs> I didn't think a reverb question was coming up. But you know, you can go into Sound Designer and um, you can import impulse settings from commercially available hardware where they record the, the reverb itself. And that's kind of a good fudge, I suppose, between but really, there's sometimes the UAD reverb's okay, but it's really hard to find a good reverb. I've never really, I found some okay. There's some good plates in Sound Designer. Um, the, um, the dark plate, I think it's a medium. Yeah, the the, the plates in in Sound Designer are pretty good, but I'll generally try and find impulse settings, which you can buy commercially. Um, online where guys record in, they'll record a click or something in the way that, the, you know, they'll record in guitar amps or whatever and uh, the way that impulse responds to the click, they'll model it in Sound Designer, so that's generally what I try and use anyway. And um, Grubber asks, uh, do you use any hardware at all? Yeah, well I use, well the Oberheim, the Matrix 1000. Um, which is just a really cheap rack mount um, thing and you can edit it using a program in, in the Mac. Um, I use the Emu 6400, uh, hook that up and I use TouchOSC in the iPad to, which is pretty cool to control the filters so I can have the iPad here and you can move the filters about on the screen, it's just like MIDI control. Um, and just, you know, I'll, I'll buy and sell stuff on eBay every month or so and get really bored of it and then just sell it and, you know, th something like the Emu has a great sound but it's such a pain in the neck to use um, compared to something like Contact or whatever. So, yeah, just um, a lot of outboard stuff and I use the, um, a guy who in Germany made a, a summing amp, he makes, it's called Genuine Audio, he hand makes them and basically you, uh, you put in your 16 inputs and it will mix it into two. So you're getting the sound out of the computer. There's no um, faders or anything, but uh, it, it just gets the sound out of the computer and then I record that two input back into the computer. So it's just like a, a circle, basically. Um, and there's a couple more. Um, Jason asks, uh, well, we've already, you've already touched on how grooves are a really impart, important part of house music and your yeah. music. Um, he asked specifically, like with regards to the kick and the bass, do you put a lot of thought into the relationship between those two elements? Yeah, I mean, I don't really like overly think about it, but as you know, you can know it instinctively when it's working or not. Um, and the, the last track, the bass was again bouncing off the kick drum, and again, that's just a, a consequence of like choke groups and eye drum where things are um, cutting each other out, and. Uh, so basically that's, that process will always work. If something's cutting it, the other thing out, then you'll always get a good groove rather than everything just flabbing about in the track and it sounds really flabby and a bit kind of, a bit messy. Okay, cool. Has anyone got any others? Okay, well, one more from, uh, from online. Um, so someone asked, uh, how, how did you get your first release? So. Uh, yeah, that's another thing I was going to talk about, I just forgot. Um, basically, I, obviously, like, when you're into music and everything, plugins and the software and everything is really cool, but when I first started out, I, I worked for this, this company called Tronic Soul. This is back in, like, 2001 or something. I was, like, 17, 18. And I, I suppose it's, like, somewhere like this where you've got a, a studio to come into and vibe off of, and there was various people coming to work. Uh, they had a, an office. Um, just next door so it was really cool because you used to go in every day and like there's loads of people working together and I suppose like here you've got a vibe to work of whereas if you're sitting in a bedroom just on your own 
it doesn't matter what kind of equipment you've got, sometimes that can be a bit kind of not soul destroying but a bit boring. Um, whereas I really enjoyed that. And I suppose it's like in Berlin at the moment, everyone's working in studios together and all that stuff. And you're going to get much better ideas just working with other people and getting vibes rather than worrying too much about equipment, which is great and it's great all the things you can do. But um, w when you work with other people, you can get much, it just kind of much better ideas, I, I reckon, anyway. So, yeah, that was a good time. So, is that how you got to that? Yeah, so, sorry, so I worked with Tronic Soul and they put out, I just did stuff on the MPC 2000 and just, I used to like sample off vinyl and then I had this old school um, CD recorder where you actually recorded the track in, in real time. So you pressed record on the CD recorder and it would like record it in real time and I would just send out demos like that. So this is kind of back in the day when people used to send in record reactions via fax and stuff. and as opposed to email, so <laughs> it's like, I feel really old. Um, but yeah, and, uh, the guy Steve at Tronic Soul kind of put out a lot of my records in the beginning. And I started working with Glasgow Underground. Um, I worked a bit with Milo before he was like really kind of huge. Um, and then I took a bit of a break from it. And then kind of now I work a lot of free range and Suba and Neurotrax and um, the stuff we do with Dark Energy, our own label, so. Um, yeah, so sorry if <laughs> maybe not been as in depth as, as I could have been. I, mean, I know a lot of people have much more exciting logic um, sessions and stuff, but I just kind of wanted to show you that I do it simply, and it's really through keeping it simple that you it, that's how you keep the vibe and everything. Whereas I see a lot of guys and they've got logic sessions that are just like encyclopedias, and it's really impressive, but sometimes a lot of the groove gets lost in that, so I try and keep it as, as simple as possible and together as possible. Hopefully um, that's kind of, you've seen that today. Any more questions for you guys at all? Okay, in that case, um, <clears throat> we'll probably wrap up there. Uh, just enough time to say a big, big thank you to, to Mill and Jax for coming down. Um, let's all give them a round of applause. And uh, for everyone watching at home, uh, if you want to come and find out a little bit more about Point Blank, about what we do, uh, just visit the website pointblanklondon.com or pointblankonline.net. And as ever, if you want to come and see the studios in person, just book a place on a studio tour every Wednesday at midday uh, or Saturday at 3 p.m. And uh, we'll see you very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.